Well, this is the We Are ND Nation podcast. I am Evan J. Thomas. With me always is the belated birthday boy, Dennis Stover. And on today's hey, show, we'll be previewing number 19 Notre Dame's final home game of the season, Senior Day versus 4-6 and six Wake Forest. But we have a special guest today who is a staple on the 1988 National Championship team at linebacker, the leading tackler on that squad. He was an All-American. He was drafted in the sixth round, number 147th overall by the Miami Dolphins in the 1989 NFL Draft. He also played for the Buffalo Bills and Atlanta Falcons. Welcome to the We Are ND Nation podcast, Wes Pritchett. All right, all right. Thank what you. What's happening? Glad to be here. Fired up. Yeah. We are ready to roll. So what is new with you? Obviously, you have a lot going on with what I see on Twitter. What's new with Wes? Wow, I'm busy. I'm a busy dad of three boys. Uh, I have a I have a senior, a junior, and a ninth grade or ninth grader, three boys, very involved in athletics. Um, this is obviously football season. So my my older two kids play together on at Raven Gap here is a boarding school in North Georgia. We moved them there two years ago. Okay. And, uh, they're 13 and 0. They're playing wow. Championship this Friday against Providence Day, um, who was the number 19 ranked team in the country. We beat them up at their place four weeks ago by a couple touchdowns. Anyway, I saw on the, my kids sent me a message. Max Preps has it as the number seven game of the week in the country. So kind of a big deal. Okay. Cool. I wonder if that'll be on ESPN. I don't know. You know, that's a great question. I don't yeah. know. That you know, the all those California teams seem to sort of get the the ESPN games, but um, we are uh, we're excited. They've worked hard. Uh, We have twenty three kids on our team with D one offers, so I mean we're we're pretty good. Wow, you guys are a stacked team, most likely. So which which son is it that's the uh, tight end that is being recruited by so many schools? That's Martin, right? That is my junior. That is Marshall Pritchett. He's a 20, 2025. Ooh, oh, so he's got one more year. Yeah, he's got another year. Okay. And uh, I've seen some pictures of him at uh, some schools, one mainly yeah. Michigan. Yep. So i uh, like to talk a little bit about that experience and how you're working with that. Well, you know, he's he's – he's such he's a great athlete he's just you know he's a kid in a man's body i mean he's you know two years <laughs> little boy seriously six five yeah two, no, wow. 20 four, six hey, he's pushing six six Oof. he moved Holy you know he was a point guard in basketball i mean two years ago he had never taken a snap at quarterback he played quarterback on his high school team and they won 10 or 11 games i mean he, he was getting recruited as a quarterback honest honestly got true story wow. and he had played wide receiver before that. He was also an All-American lacrosse player. Anyway, and so we went to the Clemson football camp, and I'll never forget. I said, you know, I think, why don't you go as a wide receiver? I, I want to see you run some routes. He's like, hey, you know, Dad, I haven't I haven't really played that position a year. I said, yeah, but you played lacrosse all summer. Like, you know, I mean, the footwork and everything, which we didn't realize at the time, I do now, all the footwork and, and the, playing the sport of lacrosse really is beneficial for guys catching catching a ball while you're moving think about it and then uh-huh. change, this mm-hmm. getting in and out of cuts and, and and having great footwork i mean it really is a great it's a phenomenal sport to play as you know in conjunction with football anyway long story short he went to the camp and he dominated and and that was sort of it and so um he had a great sophomore year. He got started getting ranking or got ranked, started getting recruited. He started getting offers and he was just um, his last um, ranking. He was the number 10 tight end in the country and like the 150th player in the country. So, wow. yeah, but, but I think, you know, his trajectory his he's at the J curve of where he's going because he's growing into his body. You know, he's, I just, I mean, the way he runs, the way he's committed to the game, the way he catches the ball, he's, you know, once he's, he's going to get stronger, eight, back too. yeah, he's going to be, I mean, he's six, five, six, five and a half, six, six, wow. two, ten. Jeez. Yeah. yeah he's going to fill out by the time he gets to college, he's two twenty five, two thirty. But I mean, you know, he, as we've been on all these trips, um, 
you know, most of the colleges are playing two tight ends. They really have a guy that puts his hand in the dirt and a guy that moves around. And I think they all see him as sort of the guy that's going to be moving all around. He's an H back. He's split out wide. He's falls in the block. He's just too good of a route runner. And he's, I, I, who's going to guard it? Right. Cornerback? No way. Linebacker? Right. No. And I don't know who could guard. They, they don't have anybody that can guard. Sounds yeah. like a Mike, uh, Michael Mayer, or, you know, some of the guys that uh, ND's able to grab on to. Yeah, uh, he's, a, I mean, Mayer is a great player, was a great player, but he, Mayer was big dude. Mayer weighed like, 260 yeah yeah the guy a, michael mayer was a unique player so mm -hmm. he, i think michael mayer could have played anywhere he wanted to oh yeah of course i want is, is notre dame kick are they looking at at, at, at marshall it's uh yeah. contention with me if you would say okay okay uh, i don't know what's going on they have their guys uh you know he's been to camp up there twice he dominated both camps they wrote articles about it the last camp, I was literally standing there talking to Marcus Freeman, had my back to the play, and he was like, wow, you, Marshall just made a one-handed touchdown. That's a great play. And he turned around, he goes, like, Marshall just made another one. <laughs> oh my God. That's great. Now, I couldn't even I couldn't stage this if I wanted to. Wow. I don't know. I think, uh, who did we have on earlier, Evan, that um, their, he had, their son, I'm, Matthew, was going to get off, or Notre Dame wasn't going to offer, and I don't know why we would oh, crap. offer. Oh, crap. I forgot who that was. Former players, yeah. Well, I mean, Irv Smith, that's the one, you know, his son, Irv Smith's son, uh, went to Alabama, plays right. in the NFL, Notre Dame. Right. How do we let him go? How does he go to Alabama? My, he, my, Joe Frederick, who you know, who played basketball at Notre Dame, tells me the story all the time that he had to beg Notre Dame to recruit Michael Mayer. Wow. He literally made Todd Light come down there and recruit him. They were not going to recruit him. That's crazy. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, don't I mean, know. in the end of the bus, I mean, they, they, they're doing whatever they're doing. It's, you know, I mean, we're yeah, getting, but uh, he's got offers from Michigan, Tennessee, Texas A&M, UNC. You know, I mean, he's got, he'll be fine. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just worried about Notre Dame because we won't be fine. It doesn't sound like <laughs> we're gonna miss out on a top uh, 100 yeah. tight end. I mean, Jeez geez. Louise. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I want to go back to your time at Notre Dame. Obviously, you were on yeah. the 88 team. Do you have like a favorite memory or a favorite game that obviously besides the championship game, the last game of the year, everything? that kind of put into that championship. I want to know if you had like a special game of your own. Well, I mean, it's, you know, we just rehashed all this with the documentary that we were filming well, for Lou. You're about that too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've had a lot of, I've thought about it a lot more in the last couple of weeks than I have in 30 years, but um, <laughs> you know, there was just for me being a fifth year, Senior, the year we won the national championship, it was it was a lot of things. You know, there was it meant so much more to me because of where I had come from and where we were. You know, when I got to Notre Dame, I I was as a freshman, I was seventeen. I graduated from high school at seventeen. I had just turned eighteen when I got to Notre Dame. I was the only kid in my class that got basically redshirted, put on the scout team, and did travel. So I was recruited you, right, Wes? I recruited me. I, I basically got my brains bashed in for a year. <laughs> um, um, tried to transfer. That's a whole nother story. My dad got on the phone one night and said, Wesley, you made a decision. By God, quit feeling sorry for yourself. I'm not going to hear about this anymore. You know, you're going to work harder than everybody else. You know, figure it out. Click. And that was the what end of that. It? So I didn't, <laughs> it wasn't a transfer portal. We had to suck it up and figure it out. So, you know, I tell my son, my oldest son tore his ACL as a junior and he, I mean, he's always been the natural. He's he's still getting recruited. But because of that, the way they slot all these kids, he's probably going to have to do a preferred walk-on. I said, look, man, the story's just beginning. It's not about where you start. It's where you end. You know, I, the fact that I was the only kid that got redshirted and was put on the scout team put a chip on my shoulder that drove me where I went. You know, I put my around and said, I'm going to work harder than everybody else. And I did. And I, and it worked out in my favor. So I, I think the same thing's going to happen to him. I'm not really worried about it, but I'm um, sorry. I got distracted. No, no, it's great. We're talking about it, you know, so obviously the Miami game that year, I hated Miami. I was on the field when they beat us 58 to seven down. Um, I hated Miami. I mean, yeah. I truly hated them. 
Uh, so All that right, specifically game, about that game, then West, uh, talk about the uh, the, the pregame the, before the before the game, the the tunnel incident. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot's been said about it. It's pretty simple. We 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 lined up at the end of the – when we warmed up, we lined up in a punt formation. Everybody stood at the back of the end zone, and the opposing team would go around and in the tunnel behind us. Well, Miami just ran right down the middle of the – right down. I remember standing there. I mean, I don't – I wasn't the first guy, but I was in the top five guys that were throwing blows. I mean, we, it was a full-on fight. <laughs> like, push it. Was a fight, yeah, uh, and that ended up being it was in our favor because I mean you know yep. we kind of, they knew that we weren't going to back down and we we were not intimidated in that game at all. Yeah, and I broke my hand in the first quarter and had fourteen tackles, so I wasn't coming oh, out of that. Game. Oh yeah, do you remember uh, what play you broke your hand? No, no, <laughs> yeah, it's just, <laughs> it just got worse as time went on. Broke fourteen. It was broken when I did it. And I ran over to the sideline, and Barry Alvarez is talking to me, and I'm calling the trainer, Jim Russ, Jim Russ, and he comes running over, and I, I said, take my fingers together. I broke my hand. And Alvarez looked at me. He said, you broke your hand. I said, tell me the defense. He told me the defense. I ran back in. He taped my fingers again. <laughs> I didn't have awesome. Awesome. Uh, so so talk I, about your uh, the documentary. That you I, my hand start, was – I was like, Ow. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh God! Taping a broken hand, I can't even imagine. So, talk about a little bit about this documentary that you were just working on with Lou. It's called "It's Called Hold to Leader of Champions." Um, the uh, producer has. Uh, I'll send you some information on it. The producer has done just did the Saul and an, an essay story. The the, Col- the Colorado quarterback. There's a whole documentary out. I'll send you the link oh, to that. Really? I face in front of me, and I don't. I just watched it the other day. It's incredible. Okay. Uh, so he has had a relationship with Lou for a few years, for three or four years. Um, he filmed Coach Holtz when he received the Medal of Honor at the White House. He, he filmed an interview with, uh, I think, with President Trump and Lou together. He's filmed um, Urban Meyer, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Uh wow. He's going to film Bill Clinton. You know, there'll be a few other. I mean, it's going to be really good. This guy is uh, is a very seasoned professional, um, you know, uh, filmmaker. And so we had. Uh, I'm so I'm a co. I'm an assistant producer. Oh, nice of the film, which would be nice to be included. I mean, it's probably just yeah. it means a lot more than an act. And it'll look good, but I'm not sure I'm really involved in the editing. But anyway. Um, I have had stuff, something to say about who came and what was said. And so we had uh, myself, Jerome Bettis, T- Tim Brown, Tony Rice, wow. Reg Brooks, Chuck Lanza, Ned Bolcar, wow. and Tony Alloway. I think you We're said Rocket Rock- as well. Rocket Rock- yeah. is yeah. yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we've had uh, a couple of them on. We got, spend, we got to spend three days together. Chuck and I and T- Chuck, myself, and Tim Brown played golf at Lou's Club. He set it up. He was all excited. You know, I think it was great for Coach. I mean, he, you know, he's – anytime you can engage him and keep him, you know, involved, it's it's good for his m- mental uh, sure. health. So, yeah. I mean, how old is he now? Doing? He's going to be – he's about to be 87. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Last I saw of him, he was on uh, game day with uh, Pat McAfee. So yeah. that was the last time I saw him. How's uh, Coach oh. doing? He's, he's a great a, documentary. He would tell you that he's uh, mentally, he's fine. Physically, he's got some some issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, Long time. What's funny? What's funny? We um, we took him to Drive Shack one night, which is uh, like a Top Golf. Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> loves to play golf and so he decides that he's going to hit a ball and we're like no jesus he can't do this like he's going to fall over the the ledge see him like in the netting but i'll be damned he got up there and hit it straight down the middle <laughs> got back down we we're like wow it's you, guys, you guys had egg on your face after that one that's for sure yeah we that's were nervous fantastic. no i have a video of it it's pretty funny so. oh they're even better that you have video of that that's pretty freaking cool uh dennis do you have any other questions for wes i want to say who is the hardest uh on the other side of the ball offensive like tackling and somebody not that you 
were afraid to go uh, against anyone, but someone you're like, oh boy, this is going to be a, a rough day at the office. I got to bring my, my lunch. Well, be honest with you. I never, you know, th- you're talking about a guy that knew he was going to get hit by a guard, a tackle, a tight end, or a fullback every play. So uh-huh. in my mind, I was never going to back down or I was okay. truly intimidated by anybody. But in hindsight, um, I would say Ironhead Hayward was uh, a beast. Oh, no. Yeah, well, obviously. Wow. Hayward was whatever his height, 265 pounds, probably had a 25-inch neck. Was he 5'7"? 5'7". Well, I, first play at Pittsburgh, I get down in my stance, and I'm looking through the guard to the fullback, which is Ironhead, and he's down in his stance like this. Well, he they had like a special helmet made for him because his head was so big. <laughs> and, uh, he's got like a linebacker. Cage and his face, his cheeks are like coming out of his helmet. <laughs> his face was so freaking big. I mean, he, he was he was freaky. Wow. And, and it was nasty too, by the way. Yeah. He was a he was a mean guy. He wasn't like a, you know, he wasn't, he was a city kid. I mean, those, you know, he was, I would say Ironhead by far. Nice. I don't remember he running back ever being anything and as far as linemen in the college nah nobody yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean the nfl was different but uh um, sure nobody that's great not yeah, even totally no. spoiled children say it again not anybody either from usc uh from the university of spoiled children i'm sure they were they yeah were zero Back for for Southern Cal and when and absolutely punched him in the face when we played. Yeah, out. yeah I never lost Southern Cal, so fantastic. I, nobody that intimidated me out there. We thought we were tougher than those guys, and we were. Did you, how many times did you play Michigan when you were there? And we played them every year. Every they year, were, still okay. Yeah, yeah. You, okay. So I opened every year. We had the same basically. I mean, that, that yeah. interchanged maybe two or three games, but we played. We opened with Michigan. So our first yeah. three. Games, Year I played were Michigan, Michigan State, Purdue. Yeah. How do you feel about all that now, uh, Wesley, as far as the new conference realignment? uh, Do you think Notre Dame should join a conference at this point? It's awful. It's a total sellout. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's all for money. Money. All these people honestly make me sick. I mean, these these (laughs) conference alignments now, I mean, the fact that USC and UCLA are playing in uh, the Big Ten, I mean, come on. How does that work for kids that are playing baseball and hockey and soccer and field hockey? Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I mean, I agree with you with that because all the others, they have more games. Maybe the kids, I don't know. It just seems legitimately like a nightmare. You got all the, all the traditions of the, of the schools, the rivalries that you had are all disbanded now. Mm -hmm. You know, the parents aren't going to be able to see the kids. I mean, you know, I don't know. It's new. It's change in the world. Yeah. Every the only, thing, the only thing that remains the same in sports is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I think that's the name of the episode. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, everybody's asking. You know, with my, I mean, going through it with my boys now. I mean, there's there is zero parallel to when I played football. There's, it's almost a hindrance to have been recruited and gone through the process and think that it's a certain way because I've had to re. Re- yeah. learn you know i had to just step out of the way and realize i didn't know anything and it's even like i guess if you're recruited by one school now and you end up there that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to stay there because nobody you know it's now it's you can come and go as you please free agency yeah i don't like any of it i i, I don't you know i i'm old school and you know i'm glad we we made a commitment to the school that we were going to we stuck it out you know we i mean i you know i was telling my my children like, you know, everybody's like, oh, you don't know how long the coach is going to be there. And, oh, there's always the portal and all that. I said, just think about my situation. I went to Notre Dame. I was 11th string. I got redshirted. My coach left. Like, you, I, there was a million reasons right. for me to leave. A million reasons for me to leave. I didn't. And it worked out great. Yeah. Because nice. out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, doesn't happen with everybody, though, obviously. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I mean, look, I mean, let's be honest. If I had had that opportunity back in those days, I would have been gone. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, you know, it's easy for me to say it now because my options were None. very 
Then you had none. To, you know, you had to sit out a year if you, if you if you transferred. So I don't know. I mean, it's you know, it's different. The NIL thing freaks me out. I mean, you know, our are, are kids are kids going to graduate? Or is the transfer portal? You know, I'm I'm hearing the transfer portal. You know, goes both ways. The, the majority of the kids you hear all the the top players have great stories, but it's all those middle kids that don't necessarily have yeah. great stories. They're going from FBS to FCS, and what happens to the FCS kid that goes in there and gets kicked out? They lose yeah. the scholarship. His family can't afford for him to go to school. So I, you know, I it worries me that what's the carnage of all that to the actual players? You know, I don't know. I, I mean. mean I start the show with some of them. I None think. of them like it. No coach likes NIL. Not mm-hmm. one. Maybe only the Texas coaches. Because <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, it's true. Lincoln Riley likes Lincoln it. Riley. I was gonna say Lincoln Riley as well because he likes to pay his dudes. So there you go. Yeah. Wow. This is awesome That's getting great. to know you there, Wes. Uh, we're gonna go to break here in a moment, but before we go to break. Dennis and I play this game called Name That Former Irish Player. So what I'm going to do is give Dennis some stats. And this year we're doing a multiple choice version where I give him four players from that position and go from there. Dennis, you ready? I am, sir. I got a good one for you. Tight end. Uh Uh-oh. Tight end. Played from 1988 to 1991. 62 catches, 899 yards, eight touchdowns. Here are your options. Irv Smith, one of the names you brought up earlier. Andy Heck, Derek Brown, Oscar McBride. Woo. Can I answer? I think, I think Wesley <laughs> no, we knows. Know me. <laughs> I try to get more guests when they're on. I try to kind of come up with the uh, era of these. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to break here in a moment. We're going to come back. We're going to reveal that. And then we're going to get into what we're going to expect this week at against the Wake Forest, it'll get it out, Evan. And yeah. then, uh, obviously the other games that we want to watch too, because there are a bunch of good ones. And then you have Chattanooga at Alabama. What the hell? <laughs> oh, that's their game before they play uh, that's the, the game Iron before, Bowl. Before, they do that yeah. every year. I know, but it's just funny that this week is Chattanooga for Alabama. So again, Evan J. Thomas, Dennis Stover, we got Wes Pritchett, 1988 National Woo! Champion. This is the We Are ND Nation podcast, and we'll be right back. Irish. Welcome back to the We Are ND Nation podcast. Evan J. Thomas, Dennis Stover, and our special guest, Wes Pritchett, off of the 1988 National Championship team under Lou Holtz. And before the break, we gave Dennis some options for reveal that former Irish player. So here we go. This is what we're going to do again. Here are your stats. Tight end from 1988 to 1991, 62 catches. 899 yards and eight touchdowns. Obviously, Wes already knows this because he said he wanted to guess, but here are Dennis's choices. Irv Smith, Andy Heck, Derek Brown, Oscar McBride. Dennis? This one's tough. I think I might miss this one because I think it's a trick uh, question, but I'm going to say the eight touchdowns. Is it who, who is C again? Uh, Derek, Derek Brown? Brown? That's what I'm going to say. It's Irv Smith, wasn't it? You had it. Oh, I did? Oh, I thought for a minute it was Andy Heck because I swear I I thought he came to Notre Dame as a tight end. He did come as a tight end. Obviously, he moved to – I do it because of the years because Derek Brown was the only guy I knew because Andy Heck would have been gone by 91 and Derek Brown – Right. Okay. And he was a a, uh, friend. And I think Oscar McBride was later. uh, I had to pull names out. Man, that was a good one, Evans. That one stumped me. That was a good one. You've nailed like six in a row. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, too bad. Too bad Notre Dame. He has. looked up. Don't kid yourself. He had his phone under there. No, 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 no. he doesn't do that. I never have my phone. He doesn't have no. enough time to really do That's that. That's a good I mean, one, though. I guess you kind of do, but whatever. But anyway, let's on to this week's game, uh, senior night at home against Wake Forest. Sam Hartman's going to be playing his former school, which should be yeah. 
interesting. I'm going to start with Dennis. What are you expecting this week from Notre Dame? Obviously, they shit the bed uh, two weeks ago. At- yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they got a new offensive coordinator. We don't know about it yet. Well, um, apparently somebody else is calling plays. I still haven't seen it. Wait, for real? Well, remember last week I said I saw, thought I read something somewhere? Yeah, I just I, – I, yeah, that's – I, I hate being right that I was right about that from the whole time. Uh, it's just, you know, that was, that goes back to the whole offensive coordinator hiring over the off season. That just looks silly that Swarbrick, I swear, had his hands in on it. It just, it's not right. But I expect from this game, um, I'd like to, I mean, hopefully they'll just play Sam Hartman a little bit, let someone else play. But I guess there's talk now that they are thinking about going to the transfer portal again for another quarterback. So why are they bringing in Minchie or CJ Carr then if they're just going to go to the portal every year and not develop? I, I don't, I, I don't know what, uh, and Hartman, you know, as, as great as we all thought that was going to be, you know, he ended up just being kind of mediocre. I mean, he wasn't any upgrade from Ian Book or Jack Cohen. I mean, he was definitely better than Buckner and Pine, but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe he didn't get justice either because of Jared Parker um, is not a good offensive coordinator. Um, I just hope the receivers can do something. Maybe estimate goes off, gets him some touches because I'm sure this will be the last time we see him at Notre Dame stadium and just keep pushing the defense, you know, congratulations to Al Golden for a nod for the uh, Bryles award for best. Uh, what is it? Assistant coach or best defensive coordinator? Best defensive coordinator. Defensive I, coordinator. I actually yeah. had a vote in that being a, Football writer of America. So you did. I, I got to vote. Oh, sweet. For oh, look at you, all grown up. I know. We kind of get there once in a while. So, awesome. Wes, what are you looking at at this game? I mean, what what have you seen so far this year that or haven't? And well, we- I, th- I defense has actually played pretty good, pretty well for the most yeah. of the year. I see the Clemson game, um, but for the most part, I felt like the defense played pretty well. Um, the offense has been really disappointing. I don't understand. We don't seem to have any. I, I just don't understand. I was at the game, and I say I didn't see the game, but I read like the you know the highlights of the game. I was mm-hmm. at the game last year, and I will say one thing that Tommy Reese did well is he stuck with the game plan, and he realized that we could run the ball, and we literally just shoved it down. The shoved throat. it down. And I, it just seems like we have success and we get away from it immediately. And, and I don't really know what we go into because it's just like we sit around and we do the same thing that's not working over and over again. So yeah. um, somebody oh, was you say me, that. I say that every week. <laughs> F- F- touched the ball like three times in the second half. Yeah. I, I don't kidding me. How is that? We're down one score and he runs the ball three times. So I don't know. Yeah, what I know I'm a defensive guy, but I, you know, here's the thing about, I think when you play defense, you know, what's hard to defend and it drives me insane with Notre Dame that we don't throw the ball down the field, whether or not you have guys who can catch it, you throw the freaking ball. So the safety cannot come up. Right. Right. But the USC game, Lou, Lou was saying they had practiced all week. Because the SC guys were saying they didn't have to worry about Tony Rice throwing the ball. We had practiced all week. The first game of the of the of the first play of the game was going to be a play action, take the ball back and throw the ball as far as you can to rock it. And the problem was they down the ball on the one yard line. So Lou was freaking out. He's like, "Man, I don't <laughs> play because Tony, you know, kind of slips in the back of the end zone, but he throws the ball and Rocket catches it." But Lou was saying the same thing. And when we were sitting there with him, he's like, you have to stretch the defense out. He's like, I wanted Rocket to run as fast as he could. Whether or not he caught the ball, they had to be scared that we were going to do that. Right. If you throw all your patterns 10 and 15, 20 yards, what are they scared of? I mean, Clemson supposedly went man-to-man with us the whole time. Now, another thing is we're extremely weak at wide receiver. Hmm. And so we don't have – and and the guys we have, I think, are going to be good, but they're young. So, yeah. you know, if you've got senior defensive backs like Clemson does, they're going to come up there and stuff our guys. And that's what's – we're not winning one-on-one battles with the wide no. receivers, I think, at the end of the day. Not against uh, anybody that's been a any yeah. kind of defense. I mean, I mean those Ty- first four games. 
had some. I mean, we've had look. There've been moments when guys have done great. I don't know. I, I don't no, know. You're absolutely you're right. right. That's exactly the season. Eight. What's that? That's exactly the season. You're absolutely right. There's been a couple moments, not as many as there we thought there was going to be, but uh, it's it's uh, they're not putting their best foot forward. And the effort they showed at Clemson was just. It's like they didn't want to be there. It's like the Louisville game. They just were still on the bus. Well, you know, one thing I think that Coach Holtz did very well is he would break us down and build us up over the week. And we would go in and we would be we would be peaking on Friday and Saturday. Like he, mm-hmm. We were ready for every game. And it just feels like they're not. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but how can you go down to Clemson and lay an egg? I just don't. That yeah. that doesn't make sense to me. That's what I said. And they had a bye week. They had it. Oh, you had you had to, you couldn't get up for one game and then have a break. It's, it was ridiculous. It was inexcusable. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So you were saying, Wes, too, the the wide receivers. I was saying two weeks ago, um, Hartman's arm just didn't look as strong as it did earlier in the season. He wasn't able to get that throat those throws he, off. He might, you know, he might be hurt, and they're not talking about it. Well, Dennis See? was mentioning that. Injury early in the year with his ankle or uh, yeah, leg. yeah, central. Central. Maybe he can't drive the ball, he can't plant and drive. I don't know, but yeah, Yeah. his arm just looked like a pus arm and he couldn't really get it, get it. (laughs) So, um, he hasn't done anything. I'm gonna go, let's do the uh, our score picks. I'm gonna start with Dennis. What do you have this week, uh, for a final? Well, I think the defense might be get us. Maybe one more score. I was. I thought our special teams were were uh, had maybe made it a little bit better, but they looked terrible at Clemson. Um, so hopefully defense. I'd like to think they'll stick with the run some. Um, maybe they will stretch the field because it'll be Sam's last game for college football against his old team. I hope they get some. I'd like to see Angeli get in there and play and get some touches and scores. Let's go uh, thirty-seven to. 17. Well, you're very close to me again. My <laughs> final score 42 to 17. Okay. Um, I'm thinking they're going to give Hartman a um, walk off, you know, round of applause to the crowd at some point. So, yeah. They're during the game, they're going to pull them, and then uh, Peanut Butter and Jelly is going to come out and uh, the rest of the game. Wes, yeah. what do you do? You have a score pick for this week? Yeah, I, somewhere around there, I would say. I mean, we're going to win by two or three touchdowns. I think Wake is, Wake doesn't have a very good team this year, but who knows? Notre Dame has a great habit of playing down to their opponents. So um, I'm going to say 35 to 17. We all have 17. Okay. Nice, I like Touchdowns it. And field goal, and then is there any other games this weekend that you're looking Ooh. at? Obviously, I mentioned the one earlier, which I won't be watching, which is Chattanooga at Alabama. But there's a few good ones. You got UNC. Um, isn't UNC and Clemson? Yes. Uh, Utah, yeah. Arizona, I think that was... Clemson, Georgia at Tennessee. Ooh, that'll be a good game. Well, that'll be a good Kansas one. State at Kansas is 21 versus 20. Isn't there a Big Ten, a good Big Ten game? Um, Maybe not. Washington, no, that, that, Oregon, no. eight. No, Wait, there Washington, is. The, Washington, the, Oregon playing? Washington, Oregon? Oregon State. Oregon, Oregon State, State, yeah, that'll be a good game. Washington, Washington Oregon. Oregon State, that'll be a good game. Yeah, five yeah, versus really eleven, good. and then uh, the build up to next week's um, Michigan, Michigan Ohio State game is going to be pretty epic. After oh, well, you have the last time that uh, University of Spoiled Children are playing uh, UCLA um, as Pac twelve or Pac ten when it used to be. Uh, so and yeah. no cares. <laughs> right. Nobody in California cares about those teams at all. UCLA. <laughs> Play. I mean, to be what a. I mean, that just that program means nothing to anybody anymore, does it? No, it doesn't. It's crazy. It's it's They're wild. Cool. No, it's they wild. have. But like, they had the uh, Aikman and Rogers, and then basically after that, really, I mean, they had somebody. No, Rogers went to Cal, man. Cal, my yeah. bad. Yeah. They're not good. Oh no, it was um, who Cade McNown, who was like all world at UCLA. <laughs> the Bears drafted Cade McNown, and he stunk. <laughs> Oh my God, I forgot about yeah. that. I yeah. went to UCLA. Well, yeah. Man, it has been awesome having you on the show today. Yeah, so thank you. Get you on. Um, again, thank you for making time for us this week since last week was kind of a little buster, but yeah, it worked out. But 
where Thank can you. we find you? Where can we find uh, this documentary when it comes out? When is it coming out? If you even know. And, yeah, uh, the, the hope is to have uh, have it out by Christmas next year. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. It'll be next year. Be uh, it should be. It'll be. You you guys will know. I believe me. I'll I'll have it all out everywhere once we. Awesome. Once we well, maybe you can come back on and talk about it more, and maybe it'll be Freeman's third year, and we know what happens sometimes in the third year of a coach at Notre Dame, so maybe it'll be a really good Christmas gift for all of us if Notre Dame is be awesome. Great. Hey, hold for it. That's all I can hold for. That's all I can, like, put a shiny – because this season sucked, and it was a letdown. It really is a letdown. Last year was whatever. Well, we should have won the Ohio – if we win the Ohio State game, no. the whole thing different. The Louisville yeah. game is different. The whole, I just don't believe they lay those two eggs if they yeah. beat them. And they should have won that game. Yep. The players played well enough to win. The coaches lost a game. I mean, I'm yep. serious. Man. Man. Boom. We were Spoken stuff. like a true champion. And what was the name of the documentary? Uh, Holt, uh, Leader of Champions. Leader of Champions. Nice. It right. just sounds fucking badass right there. Right? What's going to be? Leader oh, of champions, man. man. I mean, we got him. We got the 1988 national champion, yes. linebacker, leading tackler on the team, Wes Pritchett. Man, thank you once again for joining me and Dennis here on the We Are Ending Nation podcast. We can't thank, thank you. Thank you, Evan. So, thank you, guys. Wes, thank you, man. And hopefully Thank you so much, Wes. You're welcome. You guys have a good one. You too. Until next time, we are We Are Ending Nation. You can find us everywhere. Dennis. Go Irish, you know what to do. Go Irish and fuck the University of Spoiled Children. (laughs) Nice.